Welcome back to your live continuing coverage of CES 2018, live right here at the Las Vegas Convention Center. We're in South Hall. I'm Michael Artsis. You are the Terrifics. You make me terrific special. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been a fun week, and we still have a lot more to get to, like this interview with Lisa from Goal Zero. Now, what I like about Goal Zero is you're focused on alternative energy. We had a blackout here during... CES 2018. It's going to be known as the Great Blackout of 2018. And this happens at a lot of venues all the time now as all sorts of power draw gets more and more. We plug all sorts of things in. And you guys have alternative energy solutions and backup energy solutions. Tell me all about it. Yeah, uh, it's pretty interesting, the whole blackout thing. I mean, if we'd been in Central Hall, LG, we could have powered your TVs. I'm just You saying. could have really powered all those TVs. There are a lot. Have you seen them? It's probably, do the math, about 110 TVs. Oh, yeah, they're beautiful. But, yeah, I could have done it. Do you know the power draw? Power draws on LG, well, especially the LGs when they're super efficient like that, they really don't pull that much power. They run great off of our Yeti power stations. they got to be like 85 watts each. Am I correct, Dave? About 30 watts, 85? What do we got? Somewhere in there. But yeah. these guys are 3,000 watt hours with a 3,000 watt surge, so I can handle it. Let's start there then. <laughs> Dave, sorry. Hey, we're on the move. Wait, this is a 3,000 watt hour battery. Exactly. This is a 3,000 watt hour. We call it the Yeti 3000 portable power station. It's a lithium battery, tons of protection. You can see here we got this 1500 watt inverter with a 3000 watt surge. It's wireless. I can control it from an app. I could turn the TVs on and off from it. It's all right here. You can think of this as a competitor to like a Honda or an inverter 2000 watt gasoline generator. But guys, it's on right there. There's so, no noise. There's so, like, no for instance, we've got a, a camera here. This draws, like, 15 watts. Uh, we got a, a, a pack attached to it, probably about another 5 watts. Uh, let's say we're going to use a, about a 200-watt uh, thing. How long can this... Uh, you know, how long can we use this for 200 watts? So you divide 200 into 3,000. Who's good at math off the top of their head? Yeah, that's pretty easy. That's going to be, like... Um, uh, is it 100 hours? Hour? It's going to be over 10 hours at least. It's got a handy roll cart on it as well, so you can pull it around with you. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. So let's move on to the next thing, Lisa. Eric, can you grab that for us? Uh, that will run our whole set, will it not? Yeah, if you're, even if you're, say we're pulling 1,000 watts out of your set, it's going to run this, that'll run it for at least three hours. The really cool thing is if we add solar to it, we can continue running it all, all the time. And can you daisy chain them if we had three of them? So we are coming out with something later in the year that's going to allow you to chain lead-acid batteries to these lithium batteries. It's never been done before. We're going to make it completely safe and make your run times go even longer. Lead-acid are like car batteries. Exactly. And the old generation of our lithium, or the old generation of our Yeti units are all lead-acid. Now, what I said after the blackout the other day that might have made sense is everybody should be on battery power here, or most people, at least battery backup. And then at night when nobody's here and you, and you can worry about less draw and certainly uh, you don't have to worry about constant draw and all that stuff you recharge the batteries and you can do it at a slower pace exactly and that's one of the interesting things when you look at home backup especially in areas where utilities are really expensive you could essentially run circuits in your home off of yetis during the day and then charge them up at night when power is a lot cheaper very smart stuff see see that's what you got to get with that's what you got to do so these are uh, smaller ones 1400 a thousand same kind of stuff you've got all sorts of connectors here for all sorts of different things uh, are these for speakers no this is for what you're going to connect to the car batteries and charging yeah so these inputs over here for charging these right here are just usb outputs we've got a c and we also have a power delivery spec and if you don't have your phone or your ipad on you you've got a screen right on the display um what about this thing over here is that a printer you guys have or uh to show off or is that actually a huge battery it's actually a refrigerator so Dometic Fridges is one of our awesome partners, and these fridges keep things cool for so long. They're great for long road trips, tailgating experiences. You plug them in, they keep stuff cold, no need for having ice running everywhere. Do you think that you're going to have a 5,000 uh, watt generator eventually? You know, I'm not sure about that. We are looking into what a larger inverter system would work on different sizes of batteries for like professionals and contractors and things like that. But for your general homeowner, anybody that wants to have a reliable source of power at their house and maybe doesn't want to invest in something like a Tesla Powerwall, the Yetis are a great solution. Not to mention I can take it with me if I do want to go camping, if I do want to go tailgating and run my TV, all without noise, all without fumes, all without gas. How much are these? So this guy retails for $3,000. It's available now, but the Wi-Fi enabled version that you 
you guys see here with those USB-C ports is going to be out in March and April. And what it's really good for, too, is I see there's an oxygen uh, mask there, and it's for uh, especially for critical life situations where you need to keep some kind of apparatus powered all the time. Yeah, I actually get chills thinking about it. We did a lot of work in Puerto Rico with some hospitals and different things like that. Oxygen concentrators, this right here is actually a CPAP machine. We've had people call our office and tell us that they were able to take their kids camping for the first time because they could take one of those CPAP machines with them. That's pretty amazing. Didn't you guys send, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you send a lot of batteries for free to Puerto Rico? Yeah, we did. In fact, between Puerto Rico, the hurricanes in Texas, and even the earthquakes in Mexico, we sent about $7 million worth of product. Free batteries. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? That's something we had to point out because this is really helping people. Now, I, I like these a lot. These are just little lights. They're LED lights, but you can hang them off your tent or maybe even in your house just because you like the way they look. Yeah, those are our LAL Mini, and that's actually a quad. So there's four different lights. It's USB powered. I can actually turn it on and off here from the Yeti by just using the app that we talked about a little bit earlier. I hang them up, honestly, on my porch at my house. I love them. And, and you have ones that are single that you could carry like on your backpack and then plug into your phone or a battery, which we'll get to later, like one of the portable ones to give you a little light when you want to work in a dark space. Um, these batteries can also recharge off of solar, right? You guys have a lot of solar panels. Yeah, we definitely look at ways to keep not only eco-friendly and sustainable, but just keep you powered wherever you might go. And that includes pairing up some of the Yeti power stations with the solar panels. We have multiple different sizes depending on how fast you want to charge stuff. If we max out the input on this Yeti 3000, and we can charge it in about six hours of full sun. So it's about a day's worth of sun. And you can also, if you're using it during the day with a solar panel out, you can slow the drain. Exactly. You can balance out the, the LED screen that you pointed out on the Yeti actually will show you how much power you're pulling in, how much power is going out of it. So you can balance out your loads. I've run entire DJ equipment off of a, off of a Yeti for a day when I paired it with solar. You DJ? I wish I DJ LJ DJ LJ. I like that. There you go. That's pretty cool. Um, so then you've got some other cool stuff here, like accessories. Uh, I don't know what this is. I thought it was a yarmulke. <laughs> An emergency yarmulke. An emergency yarmulke, just in case. So this is actually new for us here at CES. This is the Crush Light. It's a collapsible solar-powered lantern. Right now you have it on high. It'll run for about three hours. But then on low, it'll run for about 30 hours. And you can charge it through this solar panel. It's just, they're fun to have around. I can even, maybe if I lost my cup. You could drink out of it. You could drink out of it. You could just also use it as a little light for off-camera. Yeah, if we need to... What angle little, yeah, need here? if we need a little little punch. Is that what they say? A little punch. Little little punch, little punch a little punch, a little punch. Yeah, a little punch. <laughs> we could tell ghost stories. No, I like the fact it's waterproof then. You could drink out of it or yeah. water resistant. Yeah, we call it rainproof. Um, and our PD team has been eating cereal out of them and all kinds of things. But it's it's a light, guys. That's what it's really Eating meant cereal for. out of this? Yeah, they're Airbnb. It was cheap. There were no bowls. I don't know. Their Airbnb, it was cheap. There were no bowls. They were eating cereal, though. I don't know, like... Is it that sanitary? I mean, in, in a pinch, I'd maybe use it for water to survive. I don't know about eating cereal. <laughs> I mean, why not? Why not? It smells like rubber. Yeah, but it's also only 20 bucks, so. Right, so it's a cheap bowl. This is the uh, light I was talking about that you, you could do the singular light. Exactly. So that's this that's the LAL Mini, the Light of Life Mini. It's also a USB light. It's similar to what we saw over here, but it's just the single that you talked about. Okay, a lot of lanterns over here uh, and some flashlights. Uh, the lanterns are very cool, and I see they have a USB connector to charge phones and stuff. And also a hand crank in case of an emergency. i got to be real desperate to use a hand crank with all these batteries around, but... I like it. Does it have a radio in it, too, so I could hear if there's anybody out there after the apocalypse? Uh, no, that's another guy's battery. Another guy's lantern has that. Oh, oh, sorry. I, you could have just said no. <laughs> All right, these are the solar panels, some of the solar panels. Yeah, so this is our Boulder line of solar panels. They're rigid. They're really efficient. They're also chainable, so I can hook multi multiple of these together to charge up those Yeti power do they, stations. Do they ever tell you if you're actually getting sun? Because that's I've connected solar panels before, and I'm like, is it working? I'm not really sure. So these ones don't necessarily have an indicator on the back, but the Yetis over here with that handy LED screen we talked about has an input meter, so it'll show you how much power you're pulling in. And and these fold, they, they fold up for travel and stuff. Uh, how durable are they? Because that's always a problem with uh, solar panels. And also, if you were to crack one of the blocks, do you lose the whole thing? Or is it, can it still work just with less power? Yeah, the panels will still work if you crack any of them. But we have a hard time cracking these. There's a tempered glass on top and a really solid aluminum frame around the side. We've run them over. We've dropped them off of, you know, who knows what at our office. And they're still, they still work, and they still work great. You've run them over with what, like a, a shopping cart? We might have a sprinter van that we've driven over some of these. 
we got to test it. We got to know if it's going to work. You know what? I do say all the time, I don't think companies do enough testing. I'm very serious about this. Companies put a product out, you call them up and you say, hey, the, eh, we didn't get around to testing it. We just wanted to get it to market. So I like that you test it and do quality control. And I'd love to see a video of you running it over with a sprinter van. That would be <laughs> super cool. All right, and then um, if we come over here, we've got your more portable batteries that you might use to uh, charge your cell phone. And then of course, solar panels to help keep them uh, going. Are these big enough for a laptop or something? I've got a uh, 85 draw, watt draw on my laptop. Is that big enough to power a laptop? Yes, that is our Sherpa 100 power bank and the inverter on that guy is capable of pushing up over 100 watts. So it'd give you about a full charge on your laptop at least. We've got a smaller one in the 50. It's more for like the, the really light netbooks and things like that. There's also USB ports on them to charge your phone and your tablet and things like that. One thing to note, we really do have to be careful when we plug into batteries and, and to outlets. Like people don't, they just plug everything in and you can't. You have to know what the draw is before you plug it in. I mean, obviously, if you plug the cell phone charger in here, you're fine. But you plug a laptop in, you got to start worrying. And then maybe like things like hair dryers or toasters, they draw more. You got to be a little bit more careful. Here are the solar panels that can keep them powered. Uh, what about this thing? Is this a uh, very slim battery that has got to be huge? <laughs> yeah, so that's new for us here at the show as well. That's the Sherpa 40 power bank. It's about 12,000 milliamp hours. We really designed it to be a great companion for your tablets and things like that. There's USB outputs on it. It's also great for phones. It also comes with all the cables that you need. So there's a USB-C cable, a lightning cable, and a micro cable. And I noticed you build all them in, which is really, in a lot of the cases, really phenomenal. Even in the smaller ones, a lot of the uh, cabling is built in. Yeah, the cabling is really important to us. And we really go for convenience and safety. Safety is our number one concern especially when it comes to lithium batteries. You know, we built, we buy all of our batteries from tier one manufacturers. We spend the extra money to make sure that they're going to be safe for you, that when you do plug something in, we know it's going to be, it's going to be okay, even if it's not designed to run on something like this. So you're not actually making the cells, you're buying the cells and, and, and repurposing them. We're going to, Dave, go over there and take a seat. I just want to put a lantern down and uh, figure we'll have a nice little uh, lantern for our uh, rest of our we conversation. Just, we can just sit here, nice little, nice little glow we got going on from Lighthouse Mini. Yeah, maybe we can get a little, a couple of flies around us too. <laughs> Smell of a campfire, how's that? That's perfect. I like all the wood, the booth is beautiful. So my question to you now is what, a, what do you make of all this uh, can't bring lithium ion batteries on planes and what do we do to travel with all this stuff because we certainly need it. Yeah, you know, lithium batteries, they can be dangerous if they're, if, especially if they're cheaply made and cheaply manufactured, which again is why we spend so much time testing and picking great manufacturers that we work with. The one thing that I would suggest people to take a look at is definitely know the regulations. So some countries have different regulations, but typically you need something that's less than 100 watt hours. So that Sherpa we talked about that could power your laptop, that's about as big as you can take onto a plane right now. And for good reason, people got to stay safe. Yeah, and I think that when you drop a battery, even if you don't think there's damage, you should be very careful because you're changing uh, the way a battery functions, the energy that runs through it, quite often the molecular structure of the uh, internal parts. You might not even see that, but then the battery can get very hot, overheat, catch on fire, even the best of batteries, although most of the best batteries that are made well have protections against that and cutoffs and all sorts of stuff when they overheat. It's the Yeah, you're definitely right on the battery level, and again, that's why you pick good manufacturers. But the other thing to take a note of is how are the batteries put into the systems themselves. On the Yeti units, for example, all of our batteries are actually suspended within the unit so that if it does drop and we throw them down the stairs to test them it's uh it's completely impact proof so it doesn't it won't actually hit the bottom of it and it's in a completely airtight watertight com watertight container. That being said, we've added multiple layers of cooling systems. In fact, I've had one of them in the back of my car before in hot Utah summers and get up over 100 degrees, which in your car, it's 150 or so. And the fans actually kick on before the units can get too hot to keep them cool. So on these big ones, you have fans in them. That's pretty great. How did, how was the company started? We really like Goal Zero. We've seen you at a lot of shows. How's the company start? How was it started? What was the idea behind it? This is my favorite thing to talk about. So the company itself actually started back in 2010 in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, our founder, Robert... The Democratic Republic of the Congo, that would be in South Africa? 
in Africa. Yeah, the DRC, it's kind of nicknamed. Uh, our founder was there and realized the need for light, how important it was for literacy to decrease crime and really keep people healthy and happy. So what he did was came up with a battery with an inverter in it, a 15-watt solar panel, and an LED light. And he would donate it to people in the village. Well, the village started blossoming. People would use it at night to charge their cell phones, which one thing people don't know usually about the Congo and other areas is there might be multiple different networks for cell phones. There's not an infrastructure for landlines, so everybody has a cell phone, but they have to have different cell phones to talk to different networks. AT&T and Verizon, for example, wouldn't talk to each other in the Congo. You had to have a phone for each of them. So he came up with these units. He came back to the States, and people were like, oh, my gosh, I would love to take this camping. I would love to have this for emergency preparedness in case my power goes out and I need to call somebody. So from there, the company has really blossomed. You know, we're about nine years old now. We have a great parent company based in Texas, NRG Energy, and we continue to give back. This year alone, like we mentioned earlier, we did about $7 million in product for for relief efforts, but we also did a trip to Ghana where we powered up a tech education center as well as a healthcare building. We also did a trip to Poshpa in partnership with Dell Computers and again, built another tech education center. Very cool, I like what you guys are doing, I like what you're about, I like the good corporate citizenship. Um, how long have you been with the company? How'd you get there? So I've actually been with Goal Zero almost from the beginning. I've been there into my sixth year, so this is my fifth or sixth CES, and like I said, the company is only about nine years old. Um, I started in PR, and I've kind of worked my way in. I now am one of the leaders in the marketing department. It's really great because I feel like I, I, I really can contribute to the company in a lot of different ways. What do you do when you're looking at leadership and marketing? What are you doing when you're looking at what campaigns will work and how you figure out how to market the company? It's definitely talking a lot to customers and consumers and hearing their pain points and their needs. You know, when we look at the Yeti power stations, for example, how convenient are they to use? How easily can I move them around? How easy is the inter face for me to understand. This is really power at the push of a button. So marketing winds up going into the product as well as going external to say this is what the product is. Yeah, I do a lot with not only competitive research, but talking to customers like you mentioned and, and really understanding it. And then we go to our product development team and say, hey guys, this is what we're hearing back from our people that love our products now and what they want to see in the future. What's the battery life of this thing? This thing will run for about 500 hours. 500 hours? Yeah. It's 500? An awesome, it's an awesome little light. 500. I mean, this is your answer to emergency preparedness. I mean, you could just have a blackout and stick that up for 500 hours. We could probably do a show with just that. And then it can charge your phone a little bit? Yeah, it has a, about a 3,200 milliamp hour battery inside, so it'll give you about a full charge on a phone. Very nice. Thank you so much, Lisa. She's Lisa. I'm Michael. You're the Terrifics. Hopefully you enjoyed that. A little bit of alternative energy talk, some strategy, and some great corporate citizenship. We'll be back with a whole lot more live here from CES 2018 from the Las Vegas Convention Center. I'm Michael Artsis. You're the Terrifics. Stay with us.